Lavender Hill Studios is different from many of the art schools that are teaching more contemporary type of art. We teach representational art. So, you know, you've seen this before. I'll do it again. We're teaching the basic skills of traditional representational painting for people to take it and do whatever they will with it. And Lavender Hill provides a structure for people to, to kind of dedicate their time to learning to draw and paint from life. Painting always from life, not from photographs, from life, and not abstract art. Though I always say the greatest irony is the more figuratively successful the artist, the more abstractly they approach the figurative image. You don't get a degree at the end of it. You don't get a piece of paper. But hopefully you can paint. I met Scott Nan in 1998. I went to Florence to do a summer course because I wanted to learn old master techniques, the materials, the mediums, and so on. One of the students on the same summer course, in fact, we painted side by side, was Anne Witheridge. And uh, Scott was our teacher, and Nick had already trained in Spain, and I hadn't yet trained. So we were both um, under Scott. We always kept in touch, and Scott and Anne used to come over to London. We started discussing perhaps opening a school we couldn't open a school until we had a space. A studio came up opposite mine here in the Battersea Business Centre. The school was founded in 2004 and it happened when we got the amazing Northlight studio space. When we started the studios, we had four courses running with about six to eight people in each course. Now we've got lots of full-time students, which is fantastic. So we've got the light of the learner. And lots more part-time courses in the evenings and at the weekends as well. We have roughly 100 students coming throughout the week. That's top, bottom. We have people who train here just as a distraction in their busy lives. We have people who train here who want to be professional artists. We're not discriminating about who we teach. We have lots of students who come to us because they've read an article in The Guardian or they've seen us on television and we haven't even been told about it. I've written quite a few articles for the press as well. So we're just going to get a sense of the general proportions. The teaching methods are traditional. Uh, there is my crucial bottom line. In that it follows a sort of 19th century tradition, the atelier tradition. An atelier is a small art school where the student teachers and the teachers work amongst the students. So we, the teachers, often will paint alongside our students and teach at the same time. When I'm teaching, I do paint and draw at the same time because I think people probably learn more from demonstration than actually from critique. Because it's a visual language, I find it much easier actually to teach by showing than by saying. And then bang, bang. She's got a long neck. It's definitely one of her um, features. I think it's important for students to see the student teachers or me or Anne or Nick doing an actual demonstration live in front of them. You see this angle here? I've got it too straight. They can see where we make mistakes, where we correct our mistakes. Slightly up here. It can be quite isolating just drawing by yourself, so it adds an element of fun. Nick likes the theatre. This is my bottom. I keep going back to it. That will never change. If it does, just pretend that you didn't notice. <laughs> when you first start painting, it's intimidating enough having to hold brushes, think about paints, think about colour. So it's much easier to break down the learning process into four very clear, distinct processes. Proportion, line and volume, chiaroscuro and colour. These stages are a stepping stone, one naturally leading into the next. I can see the shape of the forehead. It has a width against a height. Proportion is the first thing we teach, and the starting point of that is to imagine what you're drawing encased in a box. We teach a method of drawing called encarar, which is encasing the form in, in a box, so finding out the height compared to the widths. We teach it with literally a series of white boxes. We set our box up, top line fixed, bottom line fixed. We have two side lines that are vertical that can be fluidly moved in and out because they set the proportion of the actual object onto the two-dimensional picture plane. 
and you break it down into the biggest parts before you break those biggest parts down into smaller parts. We bang on about it, you know, the whole before the parts. It's based not on measuring with a pencil or any other tool. You learn to see proportion with the naked eye. There's no measuring, no sticks, no knitting needles, and no plumb lines, purely drawing. If you measure from the beginning using sort of artifice in some way, you come to rely on it all the time. And then you feel that you can't escape it. And that um, limits you as a painter, I think. Enkaha is a very uh, wonderful and immediate method. In the real world, people aren't going to sit for you for three weeks for a portrait. They're going to sit for you for six hours. And most of our students can do a, a, a fresh, clean portrait in three hours. When students start learning with the school, they use charcoal. And they use it through the three of the first four introductory stages. So they use it a lot. We use packing paper. You can draw and experiment and, you know, repeat, 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 and then throw it away. You know, it costs nothing, it's cheap as chips. The method taught here, essentially, it's a method of mass drawing. So it's teaching you from the very beginning to see large shapes of light and dark. The benefits of that are that it translates very easily into painting. When you use paint, you use a, a paintbrush that has a thickness. You basically apply paint in masses. Charcoal is, is a wonderful stepping stone towards oil painting because it teaches you that values are more important than colour. So when I've got my students frustrated with colour, I can show them one of my charcoal drawings and say, that looks exactly like the person, even though it's black and white. We use plaster cast. It's a controlled subject and it's white. It allows us to put a strong light source on it and create very good light and shade or chiaroscuro. Casts are still. They don't need to be paid wages. Uh, they don't talk back. The art schools of Europe were full of them. They were all binned. In order to really find this whole method and to make it work, cast drawing is absolutely where it is. I did those cast drawings like those. That's the Chiascura stage, that's the third stage. I did that for about nearly two years. Over time, we built up a team of students all trained in the exact same method. I started here in 2005 um, when the school was pretty much just opened. You know, I was the first student to be asked to teach here. Very rarely is it they train three years with us and then they're professional artists. It's usually they train with us, they then do a little bit more teaching or helping out in the studio, and then they go and find their own studio, slowly get more and more commissions, find gallery work. I've trained here for, for three years. Um, I'm at the point now where I teach and study. I've been training here for five years and then teaching for four years. Every student does the foundation course, whether they're a professional artist or a complete beginner. We always insist that they start from the beginning so that when you are critiquing, you're relating it to a much bigger picture of principles, a much bigger whole. You're moving the shadow shape too far to the left. Uh -huh. And that's why we need that foundation course so that we're all on the same page. It's a 10-week course and it's fundamental to our training. We're very flexible with when they can study and we try and work out the best schedule for them. Lavender Hill has been really helpful um, with my work um, and study balance. If I want to do two days in a row, that's fine. Um, they're really, really helpful in that sense. At the studios, we run lots of different courses. We have our, um, our termly courses, which are um, three times a year, and we have full-time students and part-time students doing that course. We also run lots of short courses. We've had Richard Schmidt and Nancy Guzik come over and give a lecture. And we've had Henry Ann come and do a four-day figure workshop, and he wants to come back again, which is really lovely. So we have quite a few of the great and good coming to see us. Lavender Hall Studios sells fine art materials, providing our students with Michael Harding, Williamsburg. We sell rosemary brushes. We stretch the students' canvases. We make panels. We also have um, lots of books that we encourage them to read and we sell them here in the, in the studio shop. 
The shop is subsidized. Everything an artist would need is right here, in-house, ready to go. There's a sketch club every Wednesday evening. There's also film nights when Joni puts on an, an art film, one of the Rich Schmidt DVDs or the Jeremy Lipkin DVDs. There's a great community around here, and we're all you know, easily accessible. I think if you train in this way, it's not necessarily for a fine art gallery representational career. Myself, I'm using it for illustration, but there's people who work in, in digital media here. There's animators who study here on the side just to brush up on that, that visual side of their art. We try to give them the bedrock or the groundwork, and then after that, they produce their own type of artwork, their own style. There is definitely a process here to be learnt. There are four very key stages to be learnt. They don't happen overnight. The best thing is not to put pressure on yourself about becoming an artist because it's not a, it's not a skill like riding a bicycle. It's a, a slow journey. It takes a while before you get to the point where you can pretty well paint what you want in your own way. And, and then I suppose what starts to count is what's inside you.